Hey, how you doing, folks? Thunder Valley Motocross was insane, bro, let me tell you. But first of all, before I get to my recap, I'm going to start with the 250 class first. But before I do that, guys, I can't stress this enough, but subscribe if you think that I'm worth listening to. And if you just, or if you just want to see some more of my games, and you will see another one later today for Press Your Luck. That will come at 1130 my time. But for now, subscribe. Let's get into this. I'm going to put up my banner here. I have two coming up. This is the first. I'm starting with the 250 class, like I said. Hayden Deegan wins again. Tom Vial was too nice. And why do I say that? <clears throat> I say that because of the move towards the end of moto number one. And I got to say, Tom Vial was leading it, and I thought he was going to get around Deegan, and then I think Deegan went down. Yes, he did go down, actually just like at Hangtown, where he had that helicopter spin. And uh, still, like I said in that video, I hope somebody got Greg Albertine on the phone and told him about what Deegan did and replicated his helicopter spin move at Glen Helen 97. So, <clears throat> as far as Thunder Valley goes, Hayden Deegan made another statement win for... And made it three in a row. But I'll be honest with you, with eight rounds remaining, I don't think there's any way that Hayden Deegan is going to go 11-0 and 0 in the 250 class with this kind of talent. If he does, he is the man because the 250 class is totally stacked. As David Bailey said about the 2000 <clears throat> 125 East Supercross season about Ernesto Fonseca going six out of seven, that there was no way that he was going to do that. And, and David Bailey was right. As it turns out, Fonseca only won the final round at uh, Chicago. But this year in motocross, in this year, in this year's motocross season, I don't see any way that Hayden Deegan is going to go, is going to go 11 and 0 in overalls. I mean, he's already lost two motos. Did I predict a perfect season 22 and 0 like Chet Lawrence did in the 450 class last year? Absolutely not. This class is way too stacked, like I said earlier. Because you got guys like Vial, Chance Hymas, who won one of the motos, and uh, other guys like Levi Kitchen, and, of course, the continued development of Ty Masterpool. And, by the way, shout-out to Masterpool for earning fastest qualifier, and he made the most of his day today, or I should say that day. Because, obviously, Ty... I thought he was going to take, I thought at Hangtown he would show me something. And for a bit he did, but in the end result, not so much. And of course, he returns to, and he returns to the track where he had a breakout ride in the 450 class a year ago. And good ride for Ty. And uh, <clears throat> once again, so. Obviously, I think that uh, Ty is starting to come around. And I don't think it's going to be long before we see Ty Masterpool challenging for wins. And if that guy can stay away from injuries and trouble, he'll be a title contender before you know it. But as far as Hayden Deegan is concerned, 3-0 and right now, that's a strong start. I don't think we'll see 11-0, but if he does... But if Hayden Deegan does it, he is the man because this class, the talent pool is super, super deep, okay? <clears throat> and let's face it, I mean, if Tom Vial came in and showed a lot more aggression and, uh, and did a full-on send mode and sent Hayden Deegan down to the dirt like he did, and if, because Tom Vial, because when Tom Vial went down, I, I was immediately saying to myself that he was way too nice. Why? Because if that was back in the day, other any other guy would have just kept the throttle wide open and forced Deegan down to the dirt. Tom Vial didn't do that, and I thought that was way too cheap on him. That was way too cheap, way too nice on him. Because if I because if that was Chad Reed or James Stewart. 
he would have sent the guy down. Not going to lie to you, okay? Because really, if I was Tom Vial, I would have put Hayden Deegan down in the dirt. Or at least put him in the cheap seats. Because that's what the guys in the 80s would have done, okay? So, honestly, Tom, you got to be way more meaner than that. Because, really... I mean, I can understand you don't – if, but on the other side of the coin, I can understand you don't want a penalty. I get it because obviously you do risk a penalty. And with these AMA officials, it seems like any forms of contact is grounds for a penalty today because really I still think that the AMA officials are just way too soft. Not going to lie to you. And if AMA, and if Duke Finch were the AMA, he would have just let that go because that was the last lap, or that was the closing stages, I should say, and you were going for the win. There's nothing wrong with it. And I'll tell you this, if Vial had indeed put Deegan down to the dirt, I would have said, I'm fine with it. But for Deegan to call his move kind of cute, yeah, that was insulting, and I like it as well. I mean... We need more people like that on interviews, okay? So, obviously, while I'm a little bit disappointed in Tom Vial not, not going for it and putting Deegan down in the cheap seats, he'll learn from that down the line. And, uh, and if Deegan, or I should say Vial, develops a bit of a backbone, the next time around, Hayden Deegan is not going to be so lucky. I'm going to call it right now, okay? Next time around, whether it's Vial or somebody else, Hayden Deegan may not be so lucky. But props to Deegan for winning this. But props to Deegan for winning. I don't think we'll see 11 0. If he does, he is the man. Okay. Especially with Jay Coop and the Lawrence brothers out of the 250 class. Because I guarantee you, if Jay Coop and the Lawrence brothers were still in the 250 class, Deegan would not be on his bike. Okay. Now we're going to now I'm going to go to the 450 class here. Or, for, or first of all, before I do that, I want to give a shout out to also also to Chance Hymas for winning the second 450 moto. And frankly, I hope that's the launching point that he needs to get his career going in the right direction. Because last year, when he pulled out a supercross and got, got ready for motocross, I thought that was a bad move all around. Because you really need that kind of experience, and you're not going to buy that experience being on the couch. Okay? So, good job to Chance Hymas, second overall for the day. And uh, and I also hope that Tom Vial improves on his starts, too. Okay, now to the 450 class. Jet Lawrence statement win, Chase Sexton was too impatient. Yeah. Chase Sexton was too impatient. And I hope that Justin Cooper does not lose any sleep after leading both motos and losing them both, going 3-3 for third overall for the day. Because really, <laughs> if that were me, not only would I be working hard, but I would probably lose a night's sleep over that. Because really... Look at what happened to Carmichael when he lost the last six races of six Supercross races of 2003 to Chad Reed. And Ricky openly admits that he lost sleep over it. And I hope that Jay Coop doesn't do that over Thunder Valley. Because, quite frankly, I also think that he did hit the wall. Okay? So, but as far as Jay Coop's concerned, He'll get that experience again, and he'll. And the next time he's up front, I think he'll keep it. I think he'll keep the lead until the checkered flag. So, so Jake Coop's kind of learning the ropes. So, kind of good on him. But the second moto, Chase Sexton was too impatient, like it says on my gra like it says on my banner. And if I was Sexton, especially with. Uh, what happened to Jet? What's what happened to Jet Lawrence at uh, Hangtown? I would have waited a little bit more to make that move on uh, on uh, 
Justin Cooper because there was plenty of time in the race. And while Sexton had the good idea, it was kind of ill-advised to go for that move that early in the race because, I mean, I, I mean, obviously you want to get it over with early. I get it, which I, I can understand why Chase Sexton went for the move that early. But at the same time, you don't want to make it too early and do something like that because – the, what are the odds that Sexton pulls off that kind of ride like we saw last week in back-to-back -back races? Not very big. And that's what happened, okay? And as a result, Chase Sexton would give up the points lead to Hunter Lawrence. And Jet Lawrence made up a good amount of, a good amount of points with winning the second moto over Chase Sexton, who fell in the first moto and finished in sixth. OK, and of course, for the average viewer, you look at the overalls, you would kind of think that uh, Chase Sexton didn't have that great a day, but that doesn't tell the whole story. OK, Chase Sexton is a great rider. OK, but quite frankly, the kids got to learn some patience. OK, Jet Lawrence was patient and after Sexton went down. That kind of opened the door back up for someone like uh, for some for Jet Lawrence to be patient. That opened the door when Sexton went down. Okay, and if Sexton does that again, he's going to give away more. He's going to give away more overalls, like uh, Jane Stewart did as a rookie in the 450 class in 2006. Okay. So, anyway, obviously, that was still a good race. I still think that Chase Sexton should have been way more patient. But, of course, we're only three rounds in, eight to go. And there is, and it's a long, and, of course, it's a, it is a long season. And nobody should be thinking, just pack it in, just ride out the season, because it's way too early for something like that. So... Obviously, Sexton will have a lot more chances down the line. And uh, this championship is still wide open. But I got to go back to the interview with Hunter Lawrence where he said, the little shit got me. That was pretty uh, hilarious to say that about Jet because although it's clear that those two brothers love each other, there's no doubt that Hunter Lawrence wants to win a race. And I think he will. Somewhere down the line, he just has to work on his starts, get a whole shot specifically, and sprint the whole way, not just 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, because that seems to be the only way to win a race in the 450 class. Go the whole way, sprint the, or sprint the whole way, I should say. Okay, so while I think that Hunter will have another chance down the line, if not this season, the next season. I sure hope that he gets it because he deserves it. So anyway, guys, that's all for today. And remember, subscribe, and I'll see you all for the next round at High Point.